content of ASME Section 8 Division 1. So the first is U1, U2, U3, which I think I almost reviewed all three of them in, 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 in previous uh, slides. And it's about the introduction, introduction of the ASME Code Section 8 Division 1. I mean, U2 was the user you know, user and user responsibility also provided some responsibility for manufacturer, U3, the reference standard, and all of them is came on uh, U2 and U3, and also U1 says the one is the scope of the ASME Section 8 Division 1. And then we are having a subsection A, which is a UG, named UG, and it's a general requirement. It doesn't matter. Your pressure vessel is a carbon steel, is a stainless steel, is uh, any other material you need to follow UG requirement. It's applicable for all material, all pressure, all temperature. And then you are having a subsection B, which is a method of the fabrication, and it's in the three categories. First one is a UW for a pressure vessels. We, we, we manufacture them based on. Uh, with the welding, like this pressure vessel that you can see in here. You use the welding, you can see long circumferential joint and the longitudinal joints manufactured based off the welding. And also the forging, which is very rarely used, maybe used for very high pressure reactors or something like that. There's a solid bars and they make a drilling and make a pressure vessel. Okay, and then Brazing, which is also is not so common in the oil and gas industry, there's another method of the fabrication. Like I said, the majority of the method of the fabrication that we are using for pressure vessel is welding, UW. And then we are going to the subsection C, which is the classes of material. So you can see subsection A and B is almost general and applicable for all of the pressure vessels with any material now you are having some additional requirement based of the material of your pressure vessel so ucs covers carbon and low alloy steel like the one i have in here is sa 516 grade 70. so this material is sa 5, uh, 516 grade 70 which is a very common pressure vessel material then it goes to the UCS and then you have a UNF non-ferrous material like what like a nickel alloy host alloy there's lots of host alloy pressure vessel out there then they use the UNF for additional requirement high alloy steel UHA like the material I have for this you know uh, test coupon you can see here this is a SA 240 TP316 and it's a plate and it's a stainless steel plate 316 and this is high alloy steel because 18% chromium almost an 8% nickel is falls in the high alloy steel so if I want to make a pressure vessel with the stainless steel material like this plate and roll that and make a welding then I have to also follow the requirement of the UHA the high alloy steel and then UCI as a car, uh, cast iron is not so common to be used the cast iron on pressure vessel is is very rarely the only things I've seen in the old oil coolers on the heads might be you know uh, cast iron which is not the welding part is is a casting and and is connected to the to the to the to the shell of the oil cooler small oil coolers you see all cladding and lining is, is might be used there's a certain pressure vessel with the corrosive material inside of the vessel or the content is corrosive so they use the carbon steel for example and use a three millimeter or two millimeter uh, stainless steel and they clad to each other a mechanical bond and uh, integrated together those of we having the pressure vessel like that then it's gonna go the requirement of the UCL also need to be applied and then cast ductile iron not so common and then ferritic steels with the heat treatment this is another certain things that might be used ULW I'm gonna pass these things 
and the new LT low temperature service and the new HX rules for shell and tube heat exchangers and mandatory and non-mandatory appendixes. The reason that I skipped them, the part is in your exam that you need to know is that the UCS, UHA, that's it. So we're not going to cover everything. So you need to see, uh, know is UCS was a carbon steel and low alloy steel. Low alloy steel like a 1% chromium, half percent nickel like this and then high alloy steel like a stainless steel so i skipped the other one i mean if you want interested you can go and read them and to see what it is but our time is short in here we just cover the item is a part of the exam and then mandatory and non-mandatory appendixes and then index this is a content of the asme section 8 division 1. now let's have an example for my pressure vessel with the material of the SA516 grade 70. I want to see which of the code parts is going to apply to me and I have to follow the instruction requirement and you know avoid from any prohibitions. First introduction U1, U2, U3 I have to follow them for SA516 grade 70. UG requirement you can see a yellow highlight also I need to follow them method of the fabrication i made with the welding then uw i also have to follow that forging this is not a forging it's not a forging pressure vessel not the brazing and uh, classes of the material carbon and low alloy steel sa516 grade 70 we're going to discuss about the p number belongs to the p number one assigned to the p number one so it's a carbon steel so i have to follow ucs unf no uha no 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 and then i go to the mandatory appendixes mandatory appendixes is going to cover like if i'm doing the liquid penetrant test or magnetic particle testing there's acceptance criteria in appendix six and appendix eight which is a mandatory requirement then i have to follow them so index these are the part that is covered for you know covering what the requirement should be followed not only in the design and also manufacturing inspection and testing let's have another example you consider we having a pressure vessel with this material with the disc test coupon is a sa240 tp316l or the uh, the picture you can see in the screen as a stainless steel pressure vessel which code section or segment we have to use again u1 u2 u3 is general introduction and then ug and the method of the fabrication and welding we, we assuming we are going to make our pressure vessel with the welding the one you can see in this screen is a stainless steel pressure vessel and then forging no and brazing no class of material ucs is not belong to the ucs and non-ferrous material no and then high alloy steel uha which is we have to follow and then i'm skipping the rest of them and then mandatory appendixes like appendix 6 and appendix 8 that I explain I example to you this should be go with the stainless steel material 